Is this the best smartphone for retirees? I think it just might be. Let me tell you why. Hi guys and welcome back. Why am I talking about this phone? Well, I'm a retiree. I retired about nine months ago. So I think like a retiree now, not like a, a working person. And I've also owned smartphones since 2003. That's four years before the iPhone actually came out. I owned one of the very first smartphones. It was called an AudioVox PPC 4100. I owned it in 2003, and you had a little, uh, little stand that it sat in, and then Microsoft made software that connected the phone to Outlook, so it really had Outlook on the phone. It was just a trem tremendous phone. It was a little big and bulky, but it was years before the iPhone. Since that time, I've owned uh, Samsung Blackjack. I've owned two of them. They were fantastic. I've also owned a Samsung Galaxy Note 3, which I loved as well. I bought an iPhone, then I bought another iPhone, and now I have this, a Motorola X4. They call it a Moto X4. And of all the phones I own, as far as retirees go, I think this is probably the very best one for you, a retiree. So let me tell you about it. First of all, this is an Android One phone. You may not have even heard of that, but it's the latest thing that Google is putting out. That means that this phone is almost completely free of any what they call bloatware, uh, manufacturers, software, and applications that cause the phone to be more application intensive than it needs to be. This has a direct line right to the mothership, Google, and will receive security updates every month as well as operating system uh, updates for two years. Second thing is this phone, while it's unlocked, meaning you can use it on any carrier, uh, is also part of the Google Project Fi. Google is getting into the Wi-Fi business, and this phone will be able to be carried on the Google Fi system. All right, let's talk about the phone itself a little bit. The, the biggest feature on these smartphones is the battery life, in my opinion, is the battery life. They seem to go through, smartphones seem to go through batteries really, really quickly. My iPhone, and I've had two, I had a 6 Plus and a 7 Plus, they seem to really burn through the battery quickly and they were extremely slow to charge. So I was constantly trying to balance, well, I'm at 40% and I'll be gone for the rest of the day. Maybe I should bring a charger. Maybe I should bring a cable. Maybe I should bring the AC adapter, the power brick, all of that. This phone, it just completely eliminates that. And let me tell you why. This phone has the fastest charging system that's available in the market today. It's called Turbo Power. It will, it will add six hours of life to the phone in just as little as 15 minutes. That's less time than it takes you to have a cup of coffee. So even if you were out and you had the cable with you, but even if you were out and got stranded because the phone was going dead, by the time you finished a cup of coffee, you could have six more hours of life there. In addition to that, this phone uses software technology to determine what your most uh, important apps are at the time and power them and and put the other ones in the background so this thing just the battery life is unbelievable it has been off the charger now for uh, 29 hours and it's still at 68 percent I can't guarantee that your life will be like that I don't know what you do on your phone I don't watch videos very much sometimes I listen to YouTube to I uh, hear a little music, and I don't game. If you're either one of those, you, you know, you, you're going to have shorter battery life. But if you're just an average retiree who likes to make phone calls, send text messages, maybe do a little internet browsing, and take lots of pictures, this is the phone for you. So let's go on. Battery life, um, A+, plus, 5 out of 5 stars. Let's go down to the next feature. The next feature is IP68, which means this phone is basically waterproof. All of the smartphones today are IP67 or 68. The iPhone is uh, IP67, which means you can drop it in 
a meter of water for half an hour and it will still work. And this is IP68, a little more waterproof. You can drop it in uh, a, a meter and a half and it'll still work. Basically, they're all about the same. These things are waterproof the, today. So while you can't go swimming with it, if you drop it in the water and take it right out, it's still going to work. So, all right, let's look at the next feature. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is video calling and messaging. If you have an Apple product and you've bought into the Apple ecosystem, which is the new uh, buzzword, the I, uh, I, I messaging, excuse me, the iMessaging will allow you to talk from your phone to your iPad to somebody else's iPad to their phone. Anybody that's in the Apple ecosystem can talk back and forth. So how does this compare with that? Well, it doesn't have FaceTime, but it has Google Duo, which is their version of it. <laughs> I said the word Google and it came to life. It has Google Duo, which is a video calling uh, feature like Skype or Facebook Messenger video calling, and it works across any device. So anybody that installs the app for Google Duo, you can speak to them, do a video call with this. In addition to that, of course, it will text message to any phone, um, whether it's an iPhone or not. So I really don't think that the FaceTime or the iMessaging thing is any advantage that the iPhones have over this one. This is, uh, gives you all those capabilities. I use Google Duo to talk to my son in California all the time. Uh, Google Duo is kind of like Skype used to be, but Skype came out when there was only Skype. And what you had to do was install it on every device that you wanted to Skype with. And now Google Duo will do the same thing, much like Facebook Messenger. So now let's talk, to, talk about the next thing. Okay, the next thing is this has what's called dual SIM cards. The SIM card is the little chip that operates your phone. When you get a new phone, they switch the chip over into here. Well, this also in the tray has the capacity to hold a second uh, micro SD card or chip, which will have capacity up to 400 gigabytes, which is an incredible amount of storage. Now, you could also switch those out, too, so there's practically unlimited storage with it. But 400 gigabytes is a tremendous, it's thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of pictures tens of thousands of pictures, maybe hundreds of thousands. It's more than you would ever use. But you could put movies on it, and you could put music on it, and so on. So while you'd need a little adapter to put it in, a uh, card adapter to put it in your computer, you could download movies, you could download music onto it, and, and then put it in your phone and have it with you when you were traveling. So you could listen to your favorite music for hours. I mean, I, mean, I don't even know how long it would take you to go through 400 gigabytes the, the uh, battery life would never be long enough to listen to 400 gigabytes. It's a tremendous amount of storage. If you wanted to store that much stuff on iCloud, which is what the Apple system does in the cloud, uh, because the iPhone doesn't have a dual SIM card, there's no extra storage. What they want you to do is they want you to buy the storage in the phone. That's why the new iPhones start at $1,000 and go on up, because if you buy uh, that much storage, and you let's say you can't even buy that much. You can only get 256 gigabytes of storage. It probably cost you 12 or 1400 dollars. In this case, you could just go over to your local office supply store, buy, buy a micro SD card, put it in, and poof, you're in business. Uh, if you did store that much stuff in the iCloud, it would cost you 70 dollars a year. So that's a crazy thing. You don't have to pay for that at all on this phone. Let's talk about the next feature. Okay, let's talk about the camera. Everybody likes to take pictures. I think I saw a, a figure that there are X number of trillion pictures uh, taken every day with these phones. So it has dual cameras on the back. Uh, one is a wide angle. It also has a real interesting thing. I don't know if you can see this or not, but it has a little raised plastic ring. That means you can set it down on the back and you won't scratch the camera lens. I'm not sure that the iPhone, the newer iPhones have that. The older ones I know did not have that. So you, every time you set it down, you had to think, am I scratching the lens and I might see that forever and ever? And getting anything fixed on an iPhone is a crazy expensive. Anyway, it has a little rubber ring around here, plastic ring. 
uh, so that it can uh, be set down. This actually has a $4 clear case on it. Nothing fancy. I just took it out of a case. You can see the raised ring here. So the lens is not actually touching. Okay, so all smartphones today have at least two cameras. The leaks that are out say the new iPhone that's coming out has three cameras. In any event, uh, that has a wide angle, but it, it has lots and lots of settings inside that allow you to really manipulate these pictures before you take them, manipulate the camera before you take the pictures. If you want to do that with your iPhone, you're going to need a third-party application in order to access that. I've never been able to understand why iPhone hasn't got with the program. Those Google, that note I've got is years old and it had many more settings on the camera than the iPhone ever did. Now, not as a retiree, there's little chance that you would ever need to shoot anything in 4K, but this will shoot in 4K at 30 frames a second, and it'll shoot in high depth at 60 frames a second if you shoot video, and I do. The trouble with the video cameras, whether it's this or the iPhone, is they just can't capture a lot of complex uh, imagery. If, it, if there's a lot of movement in the picture, uh, they just can't handle that and they don't have a tremendous amount of dynamic range. I don't care what any of the tech, sec tech experts say to you. Now for grandchildren's birthday parties or the Grand Canyon or something, it'll be just fine. But super complex pictures, the iPhone can't handle them, in my opinion, can't handle them either. All right, let's talk about the next feature. So you, you've got this now <clears throat> and you're going to take all these pictures. I take a ton of pictures. What are you going to do with all those pictures? Well, if you have an iPhone, of course, be sure you have everything backed up. But if you have an iPhone, they give you five gigabytes of storage in iCloud, and from there on, you have to pay for it. I mentioned that to you earlier. Google, on the other hand, if you allow them to store the pictures in what they call high quality, they have unlimited free storage. Take all of the pictures you want, and they'll store them for you for free. In addition to that, Google Drive, which will store documents, pictures, and everything else, but they give you 15 gigabytes, three times what Apple gives you, and that's free too. So as far as storing pictures, this is hands down a better deal. All of the Google uh, storage options are far better than what Apple offers you. Before we go on to the next feature, let me just mention to you uh, the problem that I had with my last iPhone. I bought the iPhone it was uh, traded up the 6S to the 7S, and the 7S was defective. Uh, excuse me. I traded up a 6 Plus to a 7 Plus, and the 7 Plus was defective. Right out of the box, I had to take it back to the Apple Store. After I got it, I took it out, and I shot that uh, video you might have seen called Cypress Creek North Exploring and Explaining or Explaining and Exploring. The link is right here, right here. And the iPhone held my pictures captive. I could not get the pictures off. I installed iTunes. Uh, in the old days, you used to be able to just drag them and drop them, pull them right off. The, uh, but I, iPhones don't allow you to do that anymore. And I know my way around computers pretty well. I know how to get stuff on and off. I ended up calling Apple Care, and they spent over an hour. After I'd spent an hour by myself, they spent over an hour with me and we installed and uninstalled and started and restarted and used Windows and everything. And even with my new powerful Windows 10 computer, I could not get my pictures off my iPhone. Now, I got a few and the, before it just stopped and said we can't see the device anymore. In other words, the computer couldn't find my phone. But the few that I got were resized, scrambled, some were upside down. They were all tangled up. It was, I mean, it was a big mess. I spent hours and hours and hours. The second morning when I woke up, I said, I'm taking this phone back. I'm not, I like to take pictures, and I'm not going to have a phone hold my pictures hostage. Now, there's no on-device storage that I've been able to find on this. There may be, it may be here. They're all in Google Photos, so you have to download them one at a time. And if you take a lot of videos... You know, you might want to give some consideration to, do you need to download them? You say, why would you need to? Well, if you're making videos for YouTube or you want to make copies for somebody, you, you need to pull them off. And the best way I've found so far is just downloading them onto my PC one at a time. 
It's a little slow, but it works well. At least the iPhone was holding my pictures hostage. I had to. I returned the iPhone. I said I just don't want to. Don't want to deal with this. Now we can talk about the next feature. Okay, the next feature is movement sensing. Okay, this has some features that are really interesting. First of all, if you turn it face down and put it on something, it silences the phone and also puts it in do not disturb mode. So if you were sitting in a restaurant or someplace and the phone started ringing, all you'd have to do is turn it over and it would be quiet. It also allows you, of course, to speak to it. Uh, it shows this, let me see if you can see this. Every few seconds, or 15 seconds or something, you'll see that this little graphic appears and shows the battery life and the time. Naturally, it's taking a little longer this time. But you can speak to it. You can say, OK, Google, and it will come to life and do whatever it is you want to do. I can say, call George. And there it's calling my dad. So let's see here. Let's hang that up. OK, so some of the other things you can do with it, turn it over and it goes into do not disturb mode. Turn it back and it comes back to life. If you double chop it twice fast, the flashlight on the back comes on. Double top, chop it again twice and the flashlight goes off. If you flip it twice like this, the camera comes to life like that right there which if you if you happen to like to take pictures <laughs> like I do that's a that's much faster than there's any way you can get it with the iPhone so you just twist it like that and there's the camera okay well so those are the mo those are the motions turn it over it goes into do not disturb take it back comes off do not disturb uh, twist it fast twice and the camera comes to life and double chop it twice and the flashlight comes on or goes off there's probably more but I haven't found them yet uh, let's go on to the next feature as crazy as it seems, the speaker on the iPhone is on the bottom, and, the, and there were two microphones, but I couldn't hear the iPhone. What I found myself doing with a, a brand new phone was holding it upside down. And every time I did it, I said, this is crazy. The phone is making me turn itself, <laughs> turn it upside down to be able to use it. I've been making phone calls all my life, and this is the only thing I have to turn upside down. Well, this one has the earpiece and, and speaker on the top and the microphone on the bottom. So I, you, know, you, can, you can use it like a real phone. <laughs> Other thing that it has, it has a headphone jack. If you buy a new iPhone, you've got some nice earphones that plug into your current device. You can't use them with your iPhone. You have to go on eBay and buy a $2 dongle that goes in the bottom and then converts to your headphones. The Apple earbuds were really, really great, the ones that came with a phone. The wireless ones cost $160, and they have to be charged. So, I mean, that's a crazy, in my opinion, that's a crazy thing. So you, you can still use your earbuds with this thing without having to go buy something else. Okay, now we're down to the last thing, and let's talk about what makes this a good value. As retirees, value is what we're searching for. And what is value? Value is the product that you get for the price. The idea that a phone could cost $1,000 or $1,200 or $1,400 to me is just insane. All it is is just a phone. So this phone is sold by Motorola on their website for $420. However, if you watch the website, they periodically drop the price to $149. I paid $149 for this phone. My wife bought one. They went back up to 420 when they came down again. My wife bought one. So far, we just absolutely love these phones. What kind of a perspective is $149? Well, these phones are glass. All the phones today are glass on the front and back. It's Corning Gorilla Glass, but they can still break. If you drop your iPhone that you paid $1,000 for uh, and have to get it repaired, Front or back replacement runs between about three and six hundred dollars, which to me is just insane. This is just a phone, for goodness sake. The other thing is, if you have Apple Care, which is a limited support mechanism for their Apple products, and you lose 
or your phone gets stolen, there's still a $270 deductible before you can use your insurance policy. So, I mean, you're, the, the amount of money Apple milks out of you for storage, uh, internal storage, iCloud storage, repairs, and Apple Care is just insane. I know there are Apple fanboys out there watching this who are going to say, I don't know what I'm talking about. You're welcome to your, to your opinion. This is my opinion for retirees. If you won't go out and spend $1,000 on an iPhone because everybody else has an iPhone, I think you're really wasting a ton of money. This, in my opinion, is the very best phone I've been able to find so far for retirees. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope it was informative. If you need technical specs, you can Google them. You can go watch some of these uh, YouTubers that can explain every little minute piece. I was trying to give you a user perspective after a couple of months, <clears throat> and I think this is a great phone. If you enjoyed the video, you might stay tuned for other ones by subscribing and click the bell make a notification so you'll know when I post new ones and give me a thumbs up down below. I really appreciate it. Till the next video, have a great afternoon.